Hi there folks and welcome back to another interesting Genocide Dolphins development video. Um, Windows is performing slowly, that's not unusual. So what I've been doing recently is liquid simulation. Actually I've been doing a lot of things but this is the most interesting of the lot. So here we have uh, RealFlow which is a liquid simulation program which is really good but really 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 slow even on a decent computer so what I've done here is model like a little pipe with a sort of circular thing on the outside the idea is that water pours in the top here and then splashes against com comes down here splashes against that wall and comes out and sort of swirls around and that would look good in a game and I haven't really seen real full being used in games actually I've googled it for hours and there is no sort of mention of this sort of thing although I thought maybe it was used in Batman or something but or obviously in the pre-rendered scenes but this is not going to be pre-rendered this is real time so it's going to be cool anyway I'm going to play the simulation now just so you can see exactly what I have and the uh, well I'm just going to play it uh, right oh wait that's not good so anyway, the water pours on the top there, but we want to see it from the game's point of view, gamer's point of view, which is there, so I'm just going to play it. And as you can see, the water splashes around. It's even slow to preview in real flow. That's how slow it is. This is it playing pre-rendered footage that took an entire evening to render. But as you can see, it is actually uh, very cool. And very low resolution water, this, by the way. Real flow can do a hell of a lot more, but... Uh, even one frame of this water can take up to about uh, 30 megabytes even at this quality of RAM for each frame and I'm only able to use about 80 or 90 frames but even with a small amount of frames like that it at a very low resolution in real flow terms oops it's struggling you, you can create a very convincing and nice water effect. Sorry, I'm, I, I've been coding this all night. It is actually early in the morning now. And uh, I started drinking beer about 4 a.m., I guess. Um, right, there's different scene modes, so you can see the wireframe of the actual water to, to work out the complexity of it, basically. And they're actually, it's the the mesh is a cloud around particles, so you can see how it it builds a mesh around the particles, and you can set the density and all of that on on these particles and stuff. In uh, in here, you can you can set um, type to meta balls and, and other things like that. Uh, I've only tried meta balls really. And the um, the water and things like that. You have uh, type here, liquid. You can get gas. I've knocked the resolution very, very low, and I've knocked the density very, very low. Of course, the results are much better when you do it properly. But this is uh, the only way you're ever going to get it to work in your Unity engine. I think after, I guess, a week of, of messing around, or maybe about four days. Um, and there's other things uh, you can. I've changed the velocity and things like that, so it goes quicker. Anyway, that's the real flow side. So in Unity now, which we'll flick to, oh no, Unity's going to do this thing where it, it goes black and you can't see it. Sometimes getting the task manager up does it, other times you have to reload it. Looks like I might have to pause this. This is a major bug in Unity, if you ask me. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so Unity has come back to life now. Um, what I did was I rendered out the... I did a real flow simulation. I picked the 0 to about 80. I lowered the density. And then I exported it um, as an OBG sequence, which is rarely used anywhere as far as I'm concerned, but it was an OBG sequence dot obj you know it's which is simply just a set of obj's that are progressive they're actually perfectly normal obj's in their own right you could use them as normal normal objects if you wanted they're 
all the, the point is that they are meant to be read uh, sequentially. So when I made that um, sequence, I brought them into Unity and um, wrote a script that would load them up at runtime and play them. <coughs> and now what I've done is set up a little trigger. Uh, if you look at these cubes I have, oh no, don't tell me I lost something because I had to quit Unity. No, I didn't. I'm not that stupid anymore. Unity does mess you around. Even though it is the, the single greatest piece of software ever written. New bottle position. So what you see here on the, these spheres are one, this first sphere is my trigger, so if I walk into that in the game world, it will reset the whole world, although I haven't actually got it to reset the table and the bottle properly, so uh, it doesn't actually work, but it resets my animation trigger. And what that does is runs a little uh, C-sharp script, the, probably the ugliest script I've ever seen, but um, I, I found half of this on the forum and then I hacked the rest myself. Uh, seems that even the developers kind of have repaint issues for some reason so I can't really show that but it's very very simple it's just an array of OBJs then it goes through picking the, the the right one and going on to the next one as a frames per second so you can set it so it doesn't play them all too quickly because obviously you can't have the luxury of 60 FPS real flow in your game so what it does is it just plays them when I hit that trigger and uh, as an added bonus, I have a little table here with a bottle of Jack Daniels on it. And this thing here is actually triggered uh, by code. So when, I, when, the frame, when the water gets to about here, I trigger a, an explosion force which sends this table rocketing to the right. And uh, the bottle of Jack Daniels itself is tossed into the air because of the table movement. Um, and it's supposed to look like the water is sloshing the table and the bottle off uh, you know, because of the liquid movement, and this is a real flow classic that people do, and I've always uh, saw, and I've always wanted to do it myself. And I decided finally I could recreate it in code. And this thing here is actually an, an illusion because the bottle doesn't fly where I want and land where I want. So when it's sort of obscured, I teleport it to this position so that when we're standing there, it lands and shatters next to us. This all sounds amazing, doesn't it? And I haven't even showed it yet, but I'm going to. And uh, when then I have it all freeze so that the, the liquid freezes, the table freezes, and just for a bit of fun, I thought I'd have the bottle freeze, but then I realized I could have it shatter. So, in fact, I have the bottle not freeze but land and shatter, right? And all of that talk, and, and I haven't shown anything, so <coughs> I'll get back to that, right? Uh, I'll just turn off all of these things and we'll watch it. Hopefully, it'll look good. Here we go. And I've just finished this and I'm so bloody happy with it. So I walk into my invisible trigger. You actually see the table shudder, but you shouldn't. Oh, how good was that? See, the water freezes all the time style, so does the table. And you can actually walk around it. You can even uh, interact with it and stand on it and stuff, although I have turned that off for the moment because uh, there's another cool thing you can do, which is walk inside it. And here I'm going to have some sort of grate on the top, so it looks like the the door or whatever it is is escaping from the machine. It's if you imagine it maybe sort of being a crazy factory, like a bakery, and everything's gone wrong and it's spewing dough everywhere. That's a donut there, by the way, the circle it comes out of. And you're able to shatter the edges off this here, these black bits. I'll be able to shatter them with a shotgun, and you'll be able to see just a cube of of it frozen, you know, it could be melting chocolate that is cooled down like, like solar does or something like that. I'm going to practice with that next, like raindrops of, of like solar that actually freeze mid splash when they hit the ground, things like that. But watch when you, even when you walk inside here, you get uh, nice visuals that you could be using for caves or something like that. So I'm going to play that again because it's so epic. You walk into it. Oh, it just looks cool the way it freezes. Right. So, forget the shudder of the table. What's the bottle? 
smash. <laughs> See, the ball should freeze, obviously, to be in keeping, but this game is obviously beyond ridiculous anyway, you know, that this is supposed to be, I don't know, a bready, liquid dough, hot dough, I guess. But that, brilliant. And it's all 3D. It's all real. I can re-trigger it. Obviously, the bottle doesn't quite work the same. And it sometimes gets stuck on one frame like that. I'm going to jump when I go into it, just so we can really see the depth coming through. Oh -ho! And that is real-time, uh, real flow in a game. Never, I haven't found anything on Google about that. I'm sure people do, have done it, and I think it's a very, very, very cool use of real flow. Especially everyone says it's too intense. It is intense, but you've got to optimise it. It's the same as anything else, really. Trying to display massive JPEGs, you know, 10,000 by 10,000 is intense. You've just got to, you've got to rescale things, get them down. It does actually work. I mean, they're obviously not interacting with it, but if you make them colliders, I wouldn't suggest mesh colliders, but you make them box colliders, like I did before I was walking on top of it and stuff, then it works. So it's... And the reason it freezes is basically because it would be too much memory to, <laughs> to make the water settle. And I also think it's very, very cool that, it's, that it freezes, and, and I probably would have done that anyway, certainly with the raindrops. I love the bottle. Bang! Shatters, even shatters. Uh, probably going on a bit now, but... Um, I just love this program so much. Oh, I like the different angles you get and stuff, you know. And I tried it in slow-mo, but the physics seem different, and it's not quite as impressive, so... But, yeah, I think... I uh, can't remember the frame rate, but these are not even... You know, they're, I'm playing this at something like 15 frames a second, which I think is acceptable. And I'm going to mess with hot chocolate and lava and sewage and clear water and all sorts of cool, cool things you can do with this technology. Um, it's only just beginning, and there's gases in that as well. Um... But yeah, it's mega cool. Unity and real flow. Now, you, you, real flow is a real killer because it's so bloody slow, but it's actually quite fun to learn. Anyway, enough babbling. That is like the coolest thing I've done in years, if not ever. Oh, I'm going to watch it once more before I stop this. Boom! Keep running in. Whoa! All right, one more run in. Woo. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. Oh, one more thing. If you're watching this and it's actually 2014 and not in the future, right now, Listening in Shadows will have their Kickstarter campaign live. I hope they get their funding. They've had a rocketing success. So far, they have like 40 grand or something. Wait, I'm going to bring it up just because they deserve uh, something. I'll just get yeah, a Kickstarter. And they're, uh, they're really going for it. I want to see how much they have. As other people called it this year. They have 49,000. It was rocketing up for the first couple of days. It seems to have kind of quelled a bit because their fans are uh, running low. But I know anyone who might be watching this is also into this sort of thing. And they actually make some great videos about game development. That's how I found them in the first place. Look up uh, Adventures and Games Development. And, you know, I haven't actually backed them yet. You know, I don't actually have a dollar in my account, which I'm very embarrassed to say. Even though I have backed uh, 40 projects on this thing, I will back this as soon as I get uh, any money in my account. But, 
but I haven't actually got a dollar. You know, I, uh, I uh, tried to buy something in the asset store yesterday for uh, five dollars, and it got rejected. This is the life of an indie developer, and this is why I also want uh, to kickstart my game, and and probably you know I want to see indie games succeed. As you can see, the ones I'm <coughs> the ones I'm backing are mostly indie-based things. Um, yeah, so go go back it. Thanks very much.